be learning this year. I think that they're going to, oh, yeah, thank you. This meeting is being recorded. I guess you just, <coughs> does anybody mind if we record this? No, not okay. us. Thank you. Um, um, but the quantitative part is really a big part of, um, uh, they're going to improve their, their, their quantitative skills, which is going to help if they haven't yet taken the SAT. Um, it's it's going to count. Um, Marco, since, you, since you're my frame of vision, even though it's Paris, yes. you did so much, you did so much hands-on stuff. Marco was, and, oh, yeah. and, uh, and I haven't introduced Ashley, so I'll do that next, but Marco was in the, in the uh, video. You can, he doesn't have a speaking part, but he has a part where he's, he's, um, sanding the, uh, wing of, uh, of a small plane that he, a, a wing, I guess, that you created. Um, before I bounce it to your parents, how, mm -hmm. what, how can you imagine how you would be doing aerospace this summer if you couldn't be there with James um, sawing, sanding the, the wing? Did you do a fair amount of quantitative work and do you, do you see how it could be remote or not? Well, for, for mine, mine was really hands-on, but there's also that aspect of quantitative that we had to calculate beforehand before actually diving into the project and before I had to go into the CAD program and design it. There had to be a lot of um, pre-measures before, like me having to determine how big I wanted this shroud. Because the, the basis of my project, I just want to be make it kind of simple because it might seem confusing. It's a shroud, so something that encases a mounting system. And the mounting system is what you attach the model airplane in a wind tunnel. The wind tunnel is supposed to um, mock the um, speeds or the wind speeds or the airplane um, environment just so that they can still calculate certain things in the wind tunnel without having to do it in a real life scenario. So for mine, I wanted to make a shroud so that I could reduce um, effects of flow so for mine, I needed to calculate how, how big I wanted it to be so that it'll perfectly encase this mounting system, as well as me doing calculations after the fact, after I built it, to see if my shroud was actually efficient or if it was just useless. So yeah, so I, I found that there's, there's a balance in, for mine, I found, of quantitative skills and of hands-on skills. But I feel that the quantitative skills, like you guys were previously mentioning, are just as important, and you guys can definitely focus on those over the over the summer. Okay, uh, I'm glad you think that. We might be putting you on the spot too, but yeah. Um, uh, okay, Mr. and Mrs. Valadez, you know, I would just like to know the questions that you had before Marco came to this program, like you know. What, what were you worried about or what were you wondering and stuff like that? Because probably these parents um, are, are having the same question. So just, just simple. And then, you know, how, how did it, uh, how, well, how did it turn out? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, for us, it was Marco was a rising sophomore, so pretty young in high school. But, you know, he had an interest and he expressed an interest to mom and dad that he wanted to do something academic over the summer. Um, so, you know, Patrick being at USC already and, uh, you know, working along with you during the summer programs with uh, Dr. Mills, he talked to Marco about this program they had and we were a little concerned, oh, it might be a little too advanced for Marco, you know, we'll see where he's at once he's ending his freshman year being a rising sophomore. But you know, it was, it was a great experience for Marco. You know, we, we determined that, you know, we, we're like, okay, we're, we're going to do it for the summer and, and him having interest in engineering as well. I think that the balance and the way the program structure is amazing. And like Marco was saying, it's not just hands-on. It's actually learning from start to end. And the amazing professors that are teaming up with these young students to set them up for the future is just amazing. The knowledge, the PhD students, Marco's mentor was just very on individual one-on-one -on -one throughout the whole program. 
And I think Mark was able to just experience that learning experience and how much he was able to absorb was just such a great learning experience. And he's still finishing off his sophomore year and dealing with an engineering program in high school. It was a great, a great, I mean, life skills and just tools. So it, for us, you know, at first it was like, oh, should we, or should we, should we invest in this or not? But the investment, the whole time he invested there was just all worth every, every minute of, the, of, of what he had there. And, and just, you know, just everyone around him surrounding, and not only just in aerospace engineering, but in all the other specialties, you know, and, and I think that was just great. And meeting um, students from other schools and the diversity, it was just great. It was great. I'm probably going to jump ahead, but the poster session was one of the biggest, biggest uh, deals for me, well, for us all, but to see not only our son, but to see all the other students that participated, how they've grown in, in this program. And they're up there presenting to, you know, to, to just a group. They don't know anybody in the audience other than their families. And they're walking you through their whole uh, process throughout the whole, the whole uh, the summer program. And I, I felt like I had all my kids up there on stage, right? You know, as you probably feel when you're watching them just presenting and, and confidence and, and you can tell they all got a lot out of the program. And, and, and yeah, I know Marco did, but you can tell also like with Matthew, Matthew and his sister seeing, I, I remember him and man, that guy always asking questions and, and having answers and, and, and just seeing that, that uh, back to confidence, seeing that in, in, in our, all of our children is, is just, uh, just a joy to, to experience as a parent but poster session you have to be there you have to see it yeah but you know and another thing marco would have continued the program this year again just like you know michael right is it michael Matt? michael is it michael that came back twice matthew matthew matthew, matthew i'm sorry um but you know he's a boy scout so he had a two-week uh camping trip which unfortunately got canceled <laughs> But you know, he he did. He had a, a wonderful experience with just a whole, just a whole program. And Dr. Mills, you do an amazing job. So, thanks. Um, because everything's remote, we will let the alumni know about stuff that we do. So, if they want to come in and, and hear somebody talk or something like that, that would that would be fine. Um, uh, Mr. Valadez, you said the word competence a few times, and we had had two sessions with alumni, just like what we're doing, um, but with, with the students themselves. And Sarah was part of the first one. Um, and the last one was just, was, was it just, when was it, Ashley? It was just a few days ago. Yeah, it was June 4th. Yeah, <laughs> four days ago. Um, and what the, what the uh, students were talking about the most was how they had grown in confidence. Um, and that's something that I certainly observe. And it's nice to hear that you saw it in the others too. I'm not sure what we're gonna do with the poster session this year, because everybody, all of the students said that the poster session was really their highlight. And I don't know, by July 31st, maybe we can socially distance. I don't know, but at some point we will have everybody do the posters. And then maybe, maybe we will do a poster session in September or October if if COVID doesn't let us do it in July. Yeah. Um, parents, I want to introduce you to Ashley because you may not have met Ashley yet. And I'm sorry that I didn't introduce you first because I couldn't do anything without Ashley. Um, I, if you've seen the video, then Ashley's the beginning and the end of the video. Um, and we are so happy that not only she did shine in 2018, but that she is a computer science and gaming major here at USC. Um, I want you to say hi. You, you can say anything you want, Ashley, if you want. And then, um, and then I want to open it up to parents to ask questions. Um, hello, parents. Um, I just want to say that I'm really excited to start working with your kids because through the panels, I have already noticed that they're so excited to start and that just makes me even more excited to start working with them. And I think that this virtual 
this being virtual is going to be a little nicer because we get more one-on-one -on -one time with them. And so, yeah, that's all. Thank you. Thanks, Ashley. And um, I believe that your kids have all been, all of the new parents have been coming. They've come, because I recognize your names, um, have come to the alumni panels, at least uh, when they could. Maricela couldn't get into the first one because I forgot to send the, uh, the, the code. Um, but Alan and Annika and we have Mr. Yi as much as we have Maddie, but we're, we're, we're glad to have Mr. Yi at the alumni panels. Brandon, Brandon's what a leader. He's already got everybody chatting. Uh, and uh, Nico, I know that Nico was really eager to, to come. Um, uh, so can I open it up to parents? You have a chance to ask these parents any questions and please don't be shy. We're available. Happy to answer anything. <laughs> How many of your children are still in school right now? You can just two and a half. Okay. Do you do you sense that um, your your shine students? Um, Everybody's always usually a little anxious before they start because they don't know exactly what to expect. Um, but um, we have an easy time with Shine because usually the people who don't want to be here don't come to Shine. So usually, yeah, Annika seems pretty, you know, she's focused when we have the alumni panels and stuff like that. Uh, so anybody noticing that their their kids are super looking forward to this or a little a little anxious about not knowing what to expect. Yeah, Nico just received a delivery from Amazon with uh, like a test tube and a little <laughs> scale. So he's super excited. He's ready. To, he's ready to break it open and start doing stuff. So, <laughs> so that's going to be great. Some of the labs are sending materials yeah. to the students, and uh, especially yeah, like environmental, where um, I I didn't prepare that continuum. But did everybody see the um, the welcome to the shine cohort did you everybody look at that pdf that i sent out last on friday hmm, not sure if i saw that well we, so kind of like uh, everybody got to we had their picture and um and they had a little introduction to themselves and i gave oh, some no. um, i gave some uh, demographics i i could have presented that here but i really wanted this to be kind of casual we could talk um I will be every, probably every day if I can, but every other day at least, I'll be sending stuff. I know people are waiting to, to have um, our schedule and uh, different things like that. So I'm, I'm pulling a lot of things together, Ashley and I and a bunch of other Shine alumni and student staff um, are planning a bunch of things and um, doing as much, learning as quickly as possible about how to build bond communities over a zoom. So we're, we're working on that. So I have a Could question. I, Sorry, Mrs. Mrs. Modi, I heard you first. So um, I was wondering uh, for the parents of the students who have been to shine, how much of support, because I, don't come from that background myself. And any guy's super interested in computer and programming and robotics and engineering and all these areas um, that she wants to explore. But how much of support is needed from parents? Um, can is it one of those where she can just do her own? Is it also in terms of I think time-wise, the commitment-wise, um, how much should we plan as family? Should we always double check with them? Um, I just want to get kind of get a feel for how does, how, how to plan my summer basically, what to expect. I, 
I could speak. Go ahead, Mrs. Burke, and then we'll go to Mrs. Valdez. Oh, Mrs. Valdez wants to go first. That's fine. Go ahead. No, 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 we're good. Yeah, I I was just going to say, I was just going to say that as far as the time and and the investment of, of every student, Marco, he never, you know, I, I didn't really have to ask him or remind him. I think he was so involved and he was so driven because he enjoyed it so well and focused that he was just on his own. He was doing it pretty much. And I think that while, you know, um, he was there with his, you know, mentor, they were working everything up during that time. So I think they just put as much time as they want to. And I don't think that as a parent, you have to be very involved because I think the support's all there in the programs. Okay. Yeah, the PhD students are, are excellent at, at keeping them on task and, and answering any and all their questions. I didn't, I didn't have a clue what Marco was doing. And uh, he, just, he just blew me away in the end. Thank you. I, I was going to say the same thing, is that my children, they went, it was the... PhD, the graduate student who was very hands-on. I think the only thing I was involved in is I might have proofread a poster once, like just for grammar, but other than that, they they were in there excited. And then the schedule, they coordinate that with their lab. Okay. Not like it'll surprise you every day. Got it. They'll have a set, somewhat of a set schedule. Sounds good. Thank you. I and mean, the truth is, unless you, Mrs. Modi, are a roboticist, a, a, a research, you know, a computer scientist, you wouldn't be able to understand what she's right. doing anyway. I mean, there's just no way you can, you can help them yeah. with their homework. <laughs> no. <laughs> they are, and I'm not kidding. They, most undergraduate students don't take advantage of this experience. Now, Somebody like Ashley, because she knew she had already done it as a high school student, she's still working in the same lab that she was in for Shine. But, you know, she, she knew to do that. Um, most undergraduate students don't, don't even have this experience. Some of them do, but most don't. So they're, they're working with PhD, you know, students who, this summer we have two people, who, two of our Shine mentors are becoming PhD students in August. Um, so don't worry about needing to help them. And if you, even if you took aerospace or CS mm-hmm. even two years ago, it's going to change. Yes. So, uh, so don't worry about that. Thank you. Thanks for asking a question though. Anybody else? Uh, good question. Maybe it was sort of spinning off what Ashley said. You said that you thought they'd have more one-on-one time in their remarks. So can you talk a little bit more about that, how that might work? And um, Well, now the students are split into sub-cohorts. And so each of the SHINE staff, which are um, undergrads here at USC, mm-hmm. are um, assigned to one of those sub-cohorts. And so we have time to um, Zoom call with them, like do activities, get to know them, um, and then serve as mentors to them essentially. And that's something that we didn't get to do to this extent in last summer. Mm-hmm. So there's two layers of mentors. Of course, there's the, the shine mentors, um, the PhD students. But yes, I've got five undergraduate students who have three of whom graduated from, well, four, really? No, three um, from shine and are currently or about to become USC students and then two others who didn't go through shine but they've been working for me for at least a year if not two years so they're used to running student programs and yeah they have eight to ten hours a week um, just for reaching out to students and also interfacing with the PhD mentors in case the PhD mentors need any need anything I'm not sure what they would need but um, so uh, we've got near peers, and it's very important for them to have somebody like Ashley, who's mm-hmm. a rising sophomore, because so she's just two years older than a rising senior, mm-hmm. um, as well as the PhD students who could very well 
they could very well be 24 or 34. You know, that's probably a typical range for a PhD student. Mm -hmm. well, okay, 22 <laughs> to 34. <laughs> So this is Nico's mom. Um, I remember in the very first session, um, you mentioned that you might be able to give some tips in the summer about applying for engineering programs and some sort of like counseling. And now with this pandemic, it seems as though all of like kind of the normal rules have gone out the window. Like so many things have been canceled, so many kids can't take tests, et cetera. So um, we're just kind of wondering like what, how would the you know maybe the advice is shifting but at what point should we kind of have a little bit better picture or is it still all fuzzy for you know for everyone on on your end as well it's just we feel like we're just in uncharted waters right now so well it's a great question and we're still in uncharted waters so i don't know if you all know but uh, last week usc decided that we are going to open. We're going to open early. Um, we're going to have classes start on August 17th, and we're going to go through uh, and end right before Thanksgiving so that there's no fall break, there's no back and forth um, to minimize the, the bringing COVID to campus. Um, and the classrooms are going to be very socially distanced. They're going to be washed down in between. Um, the the residence halls are going to be um, much sparser than before and then all of the classes are also going to be uh, videotaped so that maybe and they're probably going to have classes on weekends and evenings too so we are we are coming back definitely um and i don't and each school each college uh it is making up its own decision hopefully even if nico is a rising senior let's hope that when by the time he goes to college in August 2021, let's hope we've got the vaccine and we've got the contact tracing and we've got this under control. Um, we are still doing the session with the uh, Viterbi admissions person. So she answers, anybody could ask any questions and she talks about not only how to get into Viterbi but other schools. Um, we always do a session with uh, how to write your college statement, um, your personal statement. And um, Ashley gave me a great idea for this year. Uh, and so instead of putting students on the spot about writing their statement, um, we are going to give them the assignment of reading, of writing about their shine experience. Um, Ashley, you can, ex you can explain why this is such a good, why I thought this was such a good idea. Um, okay, well, some applications give you an option or like suggest that you should write about something that happens outside of the classroom, which is essentially a summer program like Shine is. Um, and so I wrote a lot of my application on Shine and a lot of it was very technical. Um, and so I think it would be a good idea for us to help the students or have their PhD students help them, you know, write it in English so that admissions people can understand like the overview purpose of what they're doing, just like how they're teaching them to do so for their poster session. But this is just a little more personalized for their college applications. And the idea that I liked that Ashley gave me is that one, uh, for the UC system, which I'm imagining most of your kids will apply to the UC system, um, uh, there's Eight, there's a sort of rotation of eight optional questions and one of them is exactly what Ashley's talking about. So we thought um, that we would have them write about their shine experience. Um, mo what we hear from the alumni is that m most of the students write about shine in their college application. And if they get an interview, they write about it too. Um, Mrs. Valadez, Marco hasn't had this experience yet since he's only going into 11th grade next year, right? Do I have that right? Yeah. Yes. Sorry, we were muted. Yes, he's I know. Be a junior. <laughs> yes. So he's got years to go. Um, another thing we're going to do differently this year is um, we're going to give them a, the assignment of comparing engineering majors at different colleges, at different universities. Um, because we've never done that, but uh, you know, people tend to pick the school by its reputation. Like, oh, I want to go to Stanford. You, 
usually our kids want to go to Stanford, um, UC Berkeley, USC. Those are the those are the main schools people want to go to. They go to all sorts. We have our first person at Caltech this coming year. Uh, we have people. Uh, UPenn is uh, Matthew's our second person there, not the first. Um, uh, Duke, Purdue. So MIT. they go they go all places. Yeah. What'd you say? That we have someone at MIT. Yes, we do. MIT. They don't usually want to go to MIT. Stanford. <laughs> 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 um, um, but so they think about the school, but they're not really thinking about what the major is. So we're going to have them compare and contrast so that they get beyond the reputation of the school. Be like it was when I decided to go to graduate school, I really learned how to compare schools as an undergraduate. I didn't care, but it can make a difference in how many, you know, how much language you have to take or how much physics you have to take. Um, but it also, I think one of the things that really is an advantage for Shine is we keep their posters on the website so that when you apply to, when they apply to college, they've got a USC URL where their poster remains. So, um, that, and if you guys have any other suggestions for what would help your, your kids get into the college of their choice, I, I'm all ears. I want to help them get into college. And, and I am lucky that I don't have to make them, you know, I don't get like points if they come to USC. I just get, I just get lucky if they come to USC, but I don't, it's not, it, the purpose of Shine is not to recruit, but Marco better come to USC. <laughs> yeah, that's what we hope. <laughs> but what I wanted to say is I can't wait until Marco's able to use that recommendation letter for all of his college apps. Imagine how huge that's going to be for him. And it tells a lot about uh, the person, right? The per it tells a lot about all of our, our students that here they are during the summer, instead of being out in the beach, sun tanning, they're out at a university um, making their, their path to their future. And that's something as a parent to be very proud of. I'm glad to hear that. Um, yes, we also, at the end, they get a, a letter from their professor and their mentor summarizing what they've done and stuff like that. And then, and then I add stuff too. And um, often the, the kids will stay in touch. Like I, I bet Jennifer that uh, Matthew got a letter from uh, Professor Sedaris. Yeah, absolutely. And then I was also going to say that with regards to like the letter of recommendation, that is incredibly valuable. But the other thing that was extremely valuable that I didn't realize going into it for both of my kids is to know and learn about all the different fields in engineering. Because when they apply to some colleges, they apply by major. And so my son, when he applied to University of Pennsylvania, you know, there you don't necessarily need to say, but when your statement of interest, it's helpful to say, I'm interested in this and this is why, and this is what I've done. A lot of kids won't necessarily get into programs unless they can show like a demonstrated interest in that field. So like computer science is extremely competitive. So to be able to say he had worked in computer science in a lab, that he had done it during the summer, that was like a big help. And then to have his letter of recommendation support that. They stood at that and interested at that. I'm sure it helped. And then also to know what fields of engineering he doesn't want to do. Like he's not interested in biology. He would prefer to go to a program where he doesn't have to take <laughs> biology, right? In some programs like at Caltech or MIT, you would need to take biology. He'd prefer just to be more computer science, you know, physics, electrical engineering. So that was good for him. He's lucky to know that before he goes in. What we find also is that a lot of the students don't major in what they did in their shine lab. Um, like we've, uh, we've had people who, uh, who were in aerospace, had a great experience, came to USC on a trustee scholarship and they're doing applied math. Um, I had a, a student last year who was on first robotics team. She went into a shine robotics lab. She's going to UC Davis in materials science. I said, that's so interesting, Rachel. Why did, why did you change so much? She goes, well, it just seemed like it was really interdisciplinary and I knew that I would be able to use my coding in it anyway. 
And I just, you know, I'd learned about it at Shine and I thought it'd be interesting. So, um, so yeah, they, we, as much as we possibly can, we expose them to the other fields of engineering. Um, I think the biggest thing to say is it's just not summer school. It's just not learning the way they're used to, uh, which is tends to be more passive, more test oriented. We don't test them. I'm going to give your kids a big survey um, uh, because because we have to be a little research oriented too. So I've been putting together my survey. Because uh, I update it a little bit each year, but I also ask some of the same questions each year so that I can I can get feedback. You know, how are they? What are they learning? Um, we never care about learning it by which student like I don't know what Ashley Perez ever answered on her surveys. I, I look at it as the aggregate. Um, and so I, you know, just like the labs, I have to follow the scholarly literature. I have to know what's important in um, STEM education. And so all weekend I was reading a bunch of papers about how to measure STEM self-efficacy, STEM confidence in a, in a summer research program. And I can, I can tell you that um, in the field of engineering education, research experiences are considered high impact. They just, ha they just have a difference that school regular classes just don't have. An internship, it also is considered high impact. So Patrick's going to learn a ton at Boeing this year, but I think he had an internship at Boeing last summer. So, but I also feel that I, the reason I, Patrick worked for me before uh, Marco came into shine. And one of the reasons I hired Patrick is because he it, was an Eagle Scout. So I'm super glad that Marco had to take the summer off from Shine to be an Eagle Scout because I will always hire an Eagle Scout. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Okay, um, we're getting on in time. I want to ask if there are any other questions, comments, Mr. Yi. Um, yes. In one of your earlier um, webinars, you had mentioned that during the first week that you're going to lead them through how to do a research paper, how to read one, how to write one, and how to acquire MATLAB skills. Is that still planned? Because we haven't seen any information on that yet. Um, yes, it's still planned. I'm sitting here working on my calendar, and I'm just, I'm just, I'm really apologize that you don't have it yet, but. I, when I sent out the email on Friday with the PDF with everybody's photos, um, I will tell you right now that I'm going to take them the first week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, from 9 to 11, 1130. So you can count on that. And that will only be the first week. In the, they're going to get like a two-hour break for lunch and exercise and rejuvenate their brain cells. Um, and then... Basically, from one to three, the mentors are going to reach out to them. Um, so each mentor might do it, you know, at 1.30 instead of one, but I'm working with all 33 mentors. So there's 37 Shine students, there's 33 mentors, and there's 20, I think, 23 professors. So you just got to know that I'm, uh, I'm herding cats at this stage, and it's not the only thing I'm doing. So normally at this time, I, I have my calendar out, but because it's remote, I'm really just trying to pace things. But yes, they will start reading scholarly literature the first week. They'll be a little freaked out about it, but Ashley and all of the near peer mentors are gonna help with that. Um, week two, they will start learning MATLAB. So th that, and they will also start learning how to search the scholarly literature. And that'll be the end of week two and uh, week three. Week three, we have Friday off. Nobody does anything on July 3rd. Um, you, there's a long weekend. And then um, I think when they come back on July 6th, it's really going to be, fo their, their mentors are going to expect them to have the basic skills at that point, And they will really be doing the quantitative analyses. Um, some, uh, we're really trying hard at USC to open up the research labs to have the researchers go back in. Uh, and this is a very slow and careful process. Um, only, uh, you know, they have to go back into the labs. The researchers have to use uh, masks, shields, 
and other PPE uh, equipment. They have to take a class online first in order to get on campus. Um, there, so there's a lot of things uh, that will be slowly getting at least the professors. And the nice thing is the professors are all in town because they, during the summer, they often have to go abroad to conferences, but they haven't been able to do that. So that's also really good for your kids this year. Um, but what I'm saying is it still won't be safe. The, the USC still won't allow non-PhD students into labs um, this summer. But the PhD mentors who are in the labs can do FaceTime with the kids. They can show what they're doing in the labs. So I think that that's really good. So, um, so to answer your question, Mr. Yi, yeah, we're gonna really hit hard the sort of common skills that they need. Not everybody needs MATLAB, but we offer it. There's a lot of, um, we're gonna offer certificates in Excel, MATLAB, maybe Unity. What else was it? Python. Python. So they can end uh, the summer when maybe four or five certificates, if that's what they wanna do, um, that they could put on their resumes. Um, another thing is that 20 of the 37 students took advantage of a program being offered by Unite LA, which is the education component of the LA Chamber of Commerce. Um, it's got, it's I think a 12 hour training that they get a certificate at the end of also. It's a value of $5,000 that Unite LA is offered to Shine students for free. Um, and even Ashley, who is a whiz at getting into schools, universities and stuff like that, said that she learned a few things from it. So, so, um, so we're gonna hit hard those common and basic skills before the 4th of July but they'll still be working with their mentors that time. Their mentors, we, we don't waste time, we jump. We jump right in. Okay, any other questions, comments? Hi, Dr. Amils, uh, Hi. this is Alan's mom. Uh, just ask Alan, it seems like he didn't receive the email uh, in regards to PDF things and, um, mm -hmm. or you know our parents did. So would you please resend it? I will. Yeah. Yeah. Did anybody else not get it? I couldn't find it either. Yeah, we couldn't find it either. Really? Well, that's horrible. Well, you might check your spam filters or put me, and neither could Maricela or Maricela's family. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. That's okay, because, you know, we received the other emails, but just not that one. <laughs> Maybe because it was a PDF. Yeah. Maybe so I made it, it was a PowerPoint. Okay, so tomorrow we will resend this out and I will just link it to a Google Drive so that Thank you. it probably is because it was a large PDF. Uh, I could also put it online. Okay. Okay, thanks for letting me know. All right. Well, um, I don't want to drag this on if there aren't questions. But if you have any burning ones, it's a good time to ask. Um, we're not hard to reach. Uh, you can, I think everybody has my cell phone number so that if there's any problems, you can always get to me directly. And now, here I'm putting it in here too. And I don't, I don't have to worry about anything. We've only had one accident the whole time we were in um, on campus. That was somebody stubbed his toe skateboarding in flip flops um, at lunch. So, but now I don't have to worry about any skateboarding accidents or anything like that. Um, I have an email. You guys are welcome to email me at my email, but I will tell you that if you email me here at k12stem1 at usc.edu, Ashley, I have a whole bunch of people who are helping me check email. Really, it takes a team. I'm the front facing, but it, it takes a team to run Shine. Yes, I have, 
I hire 33 PhD students plus five or six students. Um, just getting them through uh, payroll is a huge thing. Um, all of everybody has taken um, mandatory training about a work protecting minors in the workplace. We've all had police background checks so that you can feel reassured that there's not going to be any sort of abuse going on with your kids. USC does a lot. Uh, you can count after all the trouble USC has gotten through into over the past years. Um, you can count that we are a very compliant organization. And um, so you don't have to worry about any of that. Um, so, all right, well, uh, I really want to thank Mrs. Burke, Mr. and Mrs. Valadez, Marco. Um, it, I really, I think that the two of you do know partially because we've been together for more than one year, at least through Patrick, is that I really come to care about the students. And I, I only wish I had more time um, to spend staying up with them. But that's why I have Ashley, who does a better job at, at keeping up with everybody and letting me know where people have ended up in college and how they're doing uh, and stuff like that. But, um, and Elizabeth works at USC Viterbi. And I think that she can attest that in Viterbi, people really know that Shine is important and that the students who come through Shine are, are great. Um, yep, okay. Um, so, all right, so thank you to, to Mrs. Burke. Mrs. Thank, Mrs. You. Yes, thank you. Thank you to all of you for spending your time coming here. We will, Ashley, we'll put this on, on YouTube in case you wanted to hear again what, what, what was said. Um, and I will send some materials out to you tomorrow and probably every day from between now and the 15th, okay?